Hello, hello, hello. I'm Derek, and I'm joined by my fellow House of Harkness coven member, Noah, and you are listening to Abide Of. Today on the pod, we are doing something that we have never done before in the four years it's of doing the, this podcast. It's not been four years. We started in 2020. Oh, okay. And it's 2024. Hi. <laughs> oh, man. Four years. Okay. Times, they are changing <laughs> and it is flying. Oh, yeah. We, we decided we wanted to do something a little different, a little more loosey-goosey. Um, some amazing trailers came out for things that we're really excited for, and we thought, why not just talk about the trailers, right? We had an amazing interview with Jinx. We're still riding on that high. So if you haven't listened to that, if you haven't watched that on YouTube, on your favorite podcast app, um, go and, you know, we'll link it down in the description if you want, want to find it easily, but you know, go listen to that. Yeah. I love Jinx monsoon before this interview and I just fell even more deeply in love with her after the interview. Oh yeah. Yeah. So how this episode is going to work, we picked three trailers that came out very recently and we're going to kind of talk about them. We're not going to really break them down scene by scene because you know, that's loosey goosey. Remember, we're just having a conversation. It's we're, summer fun, baby. We're flowing. We're yeah. just having fun here, but we're going to talk about, did it make us excited? Is it a good trailer? And kind of like what happens? Like our, our feelings, a reaction, you know, those reaction videos. Do we want to watch? Yeah. 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 I, I have to say one thing I learned about trailers after watching three trailers a few times is that trailers are just really hard cuts of different scenes back to back to back. And it's a lot of yelling and running and jumping. Yeah. Get you excited. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> but when you're like sitting there really watching it, it's a lot to take in. Yeah. <laughs> They're also the best parts about movies. So, you yeah. know, that's true. <laughs> it's when you have your popcorn, you're like fully enjoying it. The first couple of bites. Yeah. So before we get into the episode, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're on our Patreon, on our Discord. You know, leave some reviews, throw some stars away, all that great stuff. So we have three trailers that we're going to talk about. Umbrella Academy, Gladiator Dose, and Agatha. What's it, what's it called? Agatha All Along. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, they changed the name like they five tricked times. Us. They tricked us a whole lot. Right. <laughs> so the first trailer that we are starting off with is the trailer that was just released for the Umbrella Academy Season 4. This is the fourth and final season of the show, which of course is based on the incredibly popular graphic novel. Uh, and now has become an incredibly popular Netflix show. So I'm sad that it's ending, but I'm excited for another season of yeah. the show. I loved that in this trailer, um, they use My Chemical Romance, which, you know, lead singer My Chemical Romance, Jared Way, wrote the comic that this is based on. Incredible. So also amazing to end it on that book note. Um, I am so sad that it's ending. It's one of those shows where it is bonkers it's kooky and it's always been itself and i love that and i love these characters i love these actors so it's it's going to be sad to see them go <laughs> yeah absolutely and i think that's why it is so well liked is you know not only is there action adventure but it's about a family and these siblings and we we want to see more of them so to say goodbye to our siblings is really sad and also you know, there's also just the worry of are all of our siblings going to survive? Why well, would don't bring that up? Well, that's just how I feel. We have a short amount of time before we find out if they all don't survive or if they do. <laughs> Eight to ten hours, depending yeah. on how many episodes there are. <laughs> yeah. So last time we saw our uh, family, they got out of the Oblivion Hotel. They're in a new timeline and they lost their powers. And it's interesting in this trailer, they showed some of them getting powers back but not necessarily the powers that we're used to seeing. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought that was interesting. They showed that in the trailer. I loved this trailer so much because, again, it not only showed that there's going to be some conflict within the family, but it looks bananas. Absolutely. Having Nick Offerman and Megan Mullally in this as a couple, as Gene and Gene, spelt differently, phonetically the same, I, I, I can't wait. Like, yeah. What more do you want? I really love seeing them on screen together. I, the, he had, I think, two different times he appeared on Will and Grace with with Megan. And then, of course, they were on Parks and Rec together when she played Tammy, too, the librarian. 
And now to have them back together as Gene and Gene, I mean, it just makes so much sense in who they are. And they seem like some sort of, I don't know, are they doomsday preppers? Are they looking at the end of the world coming? Are they preparing for it? So they're going to have some role, it looks like, in the lives of the Hargreaves. Yeah, they're definitely doctors. Doctors of what? I guess we'll see. It did look like there's a specific scene where it looked like almost like a subway map, but it looks like a type. A timeline map mm-hmm. so there might be some more timeline jumping um the world is ending yet again as number five said in this uh it seems like ben is going to be the key to this it says multiple times in this ben you're the key it's something's happening to you it's going to get worse ben finally came back in like season three so it was going to be interesting to see if he actually makes it out and i love that one of the biggest mysteries of the show since season one We don't know how Ben died. He was already dead when it started. And hopefully we're going to find out. It kind of has to, right? And if they don't tell us, that's like a big missed opportunity. Yeah. And it's it was giving me the feeling of heroes save the cheerleader, save the world. It felt very much like save the tentacle boy, save the world. And we even see in this. So you had mentioned that sort of subway map. It looks like multiple timelines. And so what I'm trying to piece together or, or what. The trailer is kind of leading me to believe is that maybe we're talking one sibling from one timeline is talking to another sibling from another timeline because we see Luther thinking about, right? They ask themselves, how did Ben die? And then they say it's something like we didn't work together as a team or we failed as a team. And then they're like, and then what happened? And Luther kind of goes up like he has nothing to say. So why is that even missing for them? That's the thing. None of them know. Just because it was behind closed doors, right? Well, I think that's the mystery. None of them know how Ben died. Like, he's dead, but they don't know why. Mm -hmm. We don't know why. Right. We need to know why. We need to know why. So, I am excited for this. We are going to be talking about this um, as a normal episode. So, we'll do a whole episode on the entire season of Umbrella Academy. Very excited to end it but also sad. One thing I have to point out is that this trailer very much felt like it was for the she's, the gays, and the thays. We have Diego shirtless. We have Luther ripping off his clothing in some sort of silver bikini. I don't know if he's back on the moon, if that's a space bikini or something like that, but that is one very big British man. And so I think uh, they're giving us the service that we wanted. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I'm very excited. We've seen Klaus doing a lot of dancing like this over the last three seasons. (laughs) He Klaus is going to be the one that I'm going to miss the most. Yeah. August 8th is when it, the final season drops on Netflix. So we will have an episode shortly after that. On to the next trailer. Let's go. Okay. Speaking of very attractive people. (laughs) Gladiator the second. I don't want to call it two because it's not written as a two. It's Roman numerals. I, I. So I would say Gladiator the second. And if you say it Gladiator two, I think you're wrong. (laughs) So I'm just going to put that out there. We have to see when they start doing press for it to see how they refer to it. Yeah. So. 24 years ago, in 2000, Gladiator won multiple Oscars, broke box office records. It was amazing, right? I haven't seen it in a while. I need to rewatch it. But Are You Not Entertained has been a line that so many people quote, and it's from that movie. For us to finally get a sequel, there's been spinoffs talked about, sequels talked about, and it took 24 years for it to finally happen, for Ridley Scott to be like, you know what? Maybe I can tell a story. Um, the trailer, how did you feel about it? I have some thoughts, but how did you feel about it? So I want to say, I want to preface this with the backlash that is going to come because I have never seen the first gladiator. I wanted that to be presented before we got into the, (laughs) I am just very averse to watching people kill each other and also animals being murdered. So I never jumped on the gladiator bandwagon. I know there's, you know. An emotional story there, but I was very much thrown off by that. So as far as Gladiator II, Gladiator the second, I thought that the trailer, I mean, it looked gorgeous, right? One of the first things that I noticed is just the costuming is going to be absolutely sick, especially on our emperor character, right? We see Joseph Quinn and his his armor is just so gloriously gold and shiny that I was like, well, that looks phenomenal. Yeah, I'm very excited for this cast. I mean, we have Paul Mescal, we have Pedro Pascal, we have 
Denzel Washington, Joseph Quinn. It's a great cast. I thought they showed a lot in the trailer. It was interesting. Maybe it was more of like, we kind of want to tell people what this is about and why we're making a second one. Um, it still feels like the Gladiator movie, a little updated, a little more polished. The the epic battle scenes seem bigger. The animals seem more realistic. Now there's water. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm very excited. It takes place 20 years after the original because we know Maximus, spoiler alert, dies in that. And that's kind of the trajectory that our main character, I believe his name is Lucius, maybe, um, takes. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm very excited. Anything with Pedro Pascal, sign me up. Yeah. I will say it's so funny, though, because I feel like because Pedro Pascal and Paul Mescal already sort of have that like Roman messy haircut, it sort of just looks like Paul Mescal and Pedro Pascal wearing armor. Th- that is the thing about <laughs> Pedro is that like he always looks like Pedro, but he can act so incredibly yeah. different. And so it is one of those things where it's like, that's Pedro. Yeah. Like he's in a t-shirt and he has a sword. Like right. that's great. <laughs> um, but then like hearing him talk and how he's acting, it's like, oh, okay, cool. He's going to be kind of this like yeah. villainy character. I'm so excited for it. The only thing that was really like, if, if I had to like take a tick for the trailer is the modern music in it. Yeah. Uh, I didn't like it. I'm. I, it's not that I don't like the song. I just feel like that was weird. It was a weird choice. It was halfway through the trailer and it's like, no, Gladiator is known for Hans Zimmer, not this. So that, like, if I had to be like, this is the only thing in the trailer I didn't like, that would that would be it. But I'm excited for it. Yeah, I think so. I mean, if they wanted modern music, they should have just had, who was it, Beyonce, Britney, and Pink come out and do the Gladiator Pepsi commercial again? No, they should have had Pedro, Paul, and Joseph Quinn do that now you're right absolutely (laughs) i agree that threw me off a little bit too and i hope they're not i don't know it it just felt very um didn't it obviously doesn't fit with the time so hopefully they don't do that in the actual movie that would be a weird choice for the trailer i do think it threw me off but it's kind of like all right i guess they're trying to get people pumped up it's a fight scene right right but if they did that in the movie i think that would be really bizarre yeah i think it would be a very odd choice but i'm very excited you know, the, the trend that was going on is like, what is your Roman empire? You know, they would ask the men that. And it's like, I think my Roman empire is this with Pedro <laughs> Pascal and Connie Nielsen and Denzel Washington. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and I, I also think it's really exciting to see Joseph Quinn in another role, right? I feel like the world fell in love with him in Stranger Things. He's in A Quiet Place day one. Now he's going to be in Gladiator. What are we calling it? The second? The second. The second. <laughs> it's not that hard, people. <laughs> oh my God. So yeah, the, the cast is just stacked. And I think that having this be your Roman Empire is definitely fitting. Because it is. And, and I think you can own that. Yeah. And it, it's exciting to see Pedro and Joseph in something before they're in the Fantastic Four together. Mm. Uh, so that's fun. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting to see their chemistry on screen. Um, also, fair. You, nobody is going to be prepared for the person that I am when Fantastic Four happens. Just saying. Like warning you and all of you now. It's going to be a mess. <laughs> I'm going to hear about it <laughs> so much. Just <laughs> even just watching Doctor Who, covering Doctor Who this last season, Noah would be eating like his cereal at breakfast and be like so this thing like and he would he'll just be talking about Doctor Who. <laughs> it's it's all encompassing. There is a 6 minute long video that Derek sneakily recorded of me of just vomiting Doctor Who. I think it was Doctor Who. Yeah. Doctor was it just Who. Like theory? No idea. Don't ask me anything. I, I feel just, like I just kept talking about it and Derek just recorded me the whole time. And you know, apparently I didn't need anybody else in the room to talk about it. I am I'm literally doing just social cues like, oh yeah? Mm. And I feel like we should rewatch that. I feel to see like if any of your theories were true. I feel like I'm betrayed and it's never seen the light of day. <laughs> I just I just wanted the world <laughs> to experience what breakfast is like at our home. Doctors that have already passed. It's like, what does this mean? They're like the whole point is to like, you know, this doctor's going to end. You fall in love with this person, even though they don't end. They do. So it's like, where are the stakes in like having this person as the doctor? I don't know. 
it's just interesting to think about. I and mean, it's all up in the air. Nobody knows. Mm, except for Russell. Right. I guess we'll see where it's going to go. Because now we're looking at celestial gods of these things. And it's like, where are they from? <laughs> anyway, Gladiator the second. I'm excited. I'm yeah. excited for it. Yeah. I think the cast is cool. Ridley Scott is hit or miss, but this is one of the things that he hit with. So I'm optimistic. Gladiator the second coming out on November 22nd. Great. They did that on purpose. Oh, yeah. They must. Also, Wicked and Gladiator the second come out at the same time. It's so the new Barbenheimer. New Barbenheimer. I think um, Glicked is like the, the name. It's weird. I don't think there's ever going to be one that sounds great. Yeah. But yeah, so I'm excited Let, for that one. Can't wait for that box office mayhem. All right. So the piece to resistance, the cherry on top, kind of the reason why we wanted to talk and do this episode is for Agatha all along. One of our, I would say one of my favorite times on this podcast is covering WandaVision. I felt like we really found a community there. We found a lot of new listeners. We had so much fun. Um, it was like a new age for kind of tv we were in the pandemic there was a lot happening um so for us to finally get a spinoff from that made by jack schaefer i'm excited i'm so excited for this the trailer amazing amazing horror fanatic love horror i've been saying how many times we need more horror in the mcu we need the supernatural side in the mcu and it seems like we're gonna get it yeah, I, this right off the bat with this trailer, the mystery is there. We're trying to figure out what's going on. We're given a, a dead body that might be Wanda Maximoff, even though we know that she was with Doctor Strange at some point. So we're trying to really figure out what is going on. And I think it just sets it up for us to be like, huh? But also like, yeah, because what was so interesting about Agatha, right, is that Agatha was kind of the, the star of WandaVision, right? To come out of that series. And so the fact that we got a spinoff from her, it's like, we're going to get the cackle. We're going to get the song again. It's just going to be perfect. I feel like we're going to get multiple songs. We kind of have to. Well, with Patti Lapone on the bill. Yeah. Better. Yeah. I would say that would be a waste. Absolutely waste. Um, there is a Jimmy Kimmel video of uh, Catherine Hahn doing the entire MCU history. So if you haven't seen that, please go watch that because it's absolutely amazing. Um, Catherine Hahn is a gem. And so for her to finally like lead a series and lead this character that she made her own, because it's very different from the comics. And it was, it rubbed me a little bit the wrong way at first, but I love this character, right? This is an adaptation of the comic. So they're going to change some things. One thing I do want to point out, because this is the MCU, right? This is something that we talked about for a long time on this podcast. I'm, Interested to see if this is going to be an avenue for them to bring back the Scarlet Witch, which would be very interesting. One controversial point with this uh, trailer is who is Joe Locke playing? And there's a lot of like, is he going to be Billy Kaplan? Is he going to be, you know, Wiccan? Or the side I'm leaning more towards is Nicholas Scratch, which is her son, which is, i.e., kind of the familiar that she has. Mm. That's the side I'm leaning towards because. They specifically decide not to name him in any of the press in this official synopsis and everything. They don't actually name him, but everybody else has a name. So that's interesting to me. Like, Another why not? Mystery. Why not just call him Billy? Yeah, they're leading us on. It's almost like they purposely pick someone who very like physically looks like Wiccan, right? With the curly black hair to just not make him Wiccan. We're going to get Ralph Boner to gun. A hundred percent. Yeah. It's Boner Town, baby. Yeah. Well, oh. Boner Town, USA. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as the trailer is concerned, there's there's so much that could be broken down with this. I, I've watched it so many times. I'm just like, oh, I saw that. Oh, I saw this. What is happening here? Um, and it purposely misleads you, but also like kind of lays out like what this possibly is going to be about. I loved that all of the names that we kept getting. I'm hoping those are episode titles because that would be amazing. Mm. Um, it seems very much like when the, the trailer opens, it's Mayor of Easttown, but right. it's Agnes of Westview. Um, so it seems like we still might get that genre bending. Each episode might be a little different. I'm very excited for that. Absolutely. Right. If, if Wanda has trapped Agatha in the reality that she created, that reality was very much based on 
television genres. And so it does. It very much has that detective procedural moment. Yeah. Uh, and so I think that would be a lot of fun because then when we see Patty Lapone, she almost looks like it, it looks like that Brady Bunch feeling again. So I have a theory, right? So I think that they're going to separate themselves from WandaVision and not do sitcoms. What I think they're going to do, because a, a main point in this, it seems like, is Joe Locke's character needs Agnes's help, but also Agnes needs to like get her witchiness back. So she claws her way out, like Aubrey Plaza says. She gets out of the hex, right? But she needs to go on the witch's road, which is something that's from the comics, from Robinson's run on the Scarlet Witch. And I feel like because each scene, there was like very distinct colors and distinct types of horror that was being shown. I think what we're going to get instead of sitcoms is different genres of horror. Mm. And so because we saw the Ouija board, which is very like 80s, mm -hmm. you know, there was a demonic creature of some sort. So that's like body horror, scary stuff, monsters. Um, there was like a green filter one. There was a red filter one. There was a yellow. I, I feel like that's the direction they might be going with it. I'm excited for that. I think that's a lot of fun. And I, and I do hope they kind of carry over that trend from WandaVision because it really made each episode its own entity in this overarching thing. I do wonder, though, if we are going to be outside of this reality that Agatha has been living in for so long. I think that's what we saw, mm -hmm. right? I think the initial thing when Aubrey Plaza's character, I believe her name is Rio, um, who's the Green Witch. When she tells her, like, claw your way out, I think that was her saying the Scarlet Witch is gone, not dead, which I think is important. So get out of whatever she put you in. Because last time we saw Agatha, Scarlet Witch put her back into that hex, right? Mm -hmm. So I think she does break out of it. It's like she's reversing back in the decades. We see all her costumes and everything. And I think we get to the reality, but then they go into the witch's road and that's where it gets all mm. crazy kooky. I feel like most of it's going to take place in the witch's road. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, that, that would be really cool. And maybe each, are there multiple routes and each one is a different it's type almost, of. It's almost like each house is the trial that they have to do because there's multiple houses or like castles or like looks that were happening. So that's what I feel like. Like they get to the end of the road, there's a house. And then next trial road house. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. Yeah, I think that's a really good theory. And I, I think there would be a lot to play with there. And with Catherine Hahn leading the cast, I think it's just going to be phenomenal. And I think that they're, they're going to find that balance of horror and funny and entertaining. And I'm almost wondering if, you know, cause you're saying that Wanda isn't right. The Scarlet Witch isn't dead. She's just gone. I mean, is if they have to resurrect her. In Something. order, right? And that's how they bring her back. Or, okay, see, like, this is where it was, like, dangerous to do this. And this is why we saved it for last. In the story in Scarlet Witches, like, when she goes on the witch's road, it's so she can restore witchcraft, right? And who's guiding her is a ghost of Agnes. So there's a few scenes in this trailer. Again, we could break this down scene by scene, right? We can assume that the body that we saw was Wanda, right? There was black fingertips, which really is a signifier of somebody that had the dark hold. Um, there's a lot of like hands that were coming around the tree that kind of had a similar thing. I'm curious if where Wanda went at the end of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness was to the Witch's Road. Mm. And maybe she's like, something's happening with her. It's going to be interesting because I feel like maybe the initial thing isn't about Wanda. I feel like they might have to separate themselves a little bit, right? And then Wanda's going to come into play. Mm -hmm. Because it would be weird, right? If they didn't, this would be the opportunity to bring Wanda back. But like, I'm totally fine with it just being Agatha. I'm totally fine too. And I think, but the, the question that's always in the back of my head with any of these things is, how does it connect to the MCU, right? Other than just the character existing. Yeah. I, you know, I, I don't know, man. I, I'm... I feel like it's going to connect in the way of like, this was a character that existed prior, but I hope it doesn't like, if they bring Wanda back, then that would connect, right? Mm -hmm. Then she's going right. to be used for like the bigger events and stuff. But one of the things that was cool about WandaVision, it was kind of insular. It was something that was new, it was fresh, and it was, you know, whatever happened outside happened after the fact, right? It didn't have to involve all these different people. So I don't know. 
That's yeah. kind of where obviously I'm very excited about it. Oh, totally. <laughs> I'm totally excited too. And I'm even just thinking about the title, right? Is that in WandaVision, Agatha all along, she was the one that was pulling all this like sort of evil strings that were going on in it. But what if Agatha all along means that it was Agatha all along that had to save the Scarlet Witch? Yeah, probably. Right? Yeah. Could be. Yeah. I'm very excited. You know, I I love that uh Mrs. Hart is back as well. I'm curious because we saw some people that definitely are magic users, you know, like people that are clairvoyant and can see the future or protectors and stuff. I don't think her character is magic just from like the scenes that we see her in. I have a feeling that maybe the portal that they open that's possibly to the witch's road might be in her basement mm. and she's just like along for the ride. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. And, you know, just in thinking about the cast, if you really look at it, Catherine Hahn, Deborah Joe Rupp, Sashir Zameda, you know, um, Aubrey Plaza. These are all comedic actors. I think it's SNL. Right. And Rec. Yeah, yeah. So it's really, it's really fun to see like this dark horror show, but really being led by comedic actors. So I think they're going to have a lot of fun here. We've had this conversation before, but I feel like there's something to be said about a lot of like the SNL cast, right? Of doing after they're on SNL or during of doing these very drama heavy shows that can have funny moments, but they're like drama heavy Mm. or even horror stuff. So it's an interesting correlation there. Um, I love the cast, big cast, but it feels small at the same time. Yeah. And I think the more we're talking about it, it's exciting to think about where they pulled from (laughs) to create this because they are going to base it in things that exist in the Marvel universe of the comics. So I think kind of all these things that you're talking about excites me a little bit. Because that's one of my favorite things always is like sort of the puzzle pieces of like, oh, that's who this is. And this is who they were in the comic. And now they're here, you know, in the live action. So I'm definitely looking forward to that as well. It's going to take place over Halloween time or leading up to Halloween time. And like Halloween, there's going to be like nine episodes. There's a two episode premiere. Two episode premiere. I also have, oh, I have so many theories. Like I have literally not stopped. If If you're on Discord, like start like talk to me about like let's talk about it because like i have so many thoughts we can't make this whole thing about it um but there's like eight phases of the moon the moon showed multiple times at different phases i feel like each phase of the moon is going to be an episode you know there's just i have so many theories love it so much we're going to be covering this as well yeah oh my gosh (laughs) i hope it the timing oh my gosh so much is coming out yeah it's overlapping it's like when we did x-men 97 the end of x-men 97 and the beginning of doctor who oh yeah we're not afraid Mm -mm. we're not (laughs) um so super excited can't wait to talk about mephisto how many times um i think we saw him in the trailer uh it looks like we're gonna get some funny ass moments it looks like it's gonna be witchy as hell queer as hell i mean that's our bread and butter baby yeah that's what we love great trailer yeah yeah so september 18th yeah, using Florence and the Machine with a witch theme thing, of course, but Hello. it will always work. I don't care. Yeah. You know, she is a witch. They need to use her. And, you know, just I think what this trailer does so well is that it gives us all those little bits and bobs, but not enough to solve anything and just enough to make us want to know more. There's so much. Ooh, I let's can't go, wait. Agatha. Yeah. So let us know um, which trailer you liked. And um, what you're excited for. Yeah. We have a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff coming up. All right. Until next time. Bye. Bye.